Hey, this is uh, Henry Lee. Um, I'm going to. Uh, we already, already started start recording. recording. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, so today, today we're, we're going, going to learn plum blossom with the uh, magpie. Um, as, as you have read the uh, uh, symbolism in the email written by Yong Le. Um, it's the iconic uh, symbol of uh, happiness in Chinese culture uh, because the uh, the play of sound, xi zai, mei tou, or xi shang mei shao, is just a, um, a phrase, an expression of happiness uh, appear in on uh, about on, on the uh, eyebrows because the plum pronounced uh, as uh, eyebrows. In, in Chinese uh, Mandarin language, uh, so Mei and uh, Mei is the same. Uh, mei to or Mei Shao, uh, uh, tip of a uh, plum branch or uh, top of a plum tree, it sounds like uh, um, eyebrows, above eyebrows or uh, uh, eyebrows. Uh, raised eyebrows. Yeah, happiness uh, shows uh, um, raised eyebrows. If you if you translate uh, this word, uh, because uh, it was uh, okay, this painting is done by Master Qi Bai Shi again. Um, so the title says Xi Zai Mei Tou, happiness at raised eyebrows. Or the uh, above. Uh, on top, but this this uh, eyebrows uh, he wrote not the the plum eyebrows. So uh, the the uh, but the painting is the plum and the the the, the happy bird the xi uh, qie the magpie in Chinese uh, is a happy bird. So it, uh, because they. They, they uh, make a uh, big noise <laughs> or uh, like, like a broadcaster of a news, news a messenger of news. The so uh, in one of my teacher's painting, uh, he used the word xi bao or bao xi. So if we uh, let me turn off this, so we can. Oops. So I'm going to interrupt Henry yeah. for uh, a minute. Uh, welcome to the Brooklyn Public, Li Public Library. And uh, as we are to recording this program so for live streaming and for uh, YouTube, uh, please make sure that if you do not want to be heard or seen, please turn off your video. Thank you so much. OK, here, here we go. go. Um, and, uh, And I'll add another note. Um, the magpie um, eats a lot of various things, but 80, more than 80% of what the magpie eats are the pests. Mm. For, mm. Therefore, the farmers are extremely happy to see magpies oh. uh, because oh. they are natural control of pests and they like to graze in farm field early in the morning so imagine yourself as a farmer getting up early in the morning, see all these magpies grazing, picking up all the pests uh, from your field. You'll be very happy uh, because <laughs> your harvest <laughs> is ensured. Yes, that is one of the reasons in traditional uh, farming society, the Mac of China, uh, magpie is considered a um, messenger of good news because it brings uh, happy news uh, and the uh, harvest. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, there are many different kind of magpies. I believe I have seen some in Oregon or Texas. I forgot. Yeah, um, there, there are, are many, many different kinds. Blue ones also, also the, but, uh, the typical one is the black and white. It's good for ink painting. So what we, that's what we do today. And show you some other variations. This is what we saw. The first painting was actually done by uh, Chibai Shi's. Uh, uh, 
student Guo Xiu Yi. Um, and this painting is by my own teacher Zhang Zhenying. He's more uh, in a traditional literati style, and his uh, color is uh, more um, delicate, subtle. Uh, so he didn't even use the red color for the plum. So it's a very uh, typical literati style, so called. Uh, and I have this handout that shows the steps of the doing the plums, and I will also show you how to do the bird step by step. Um, so, so let's, let's go, go through some, some uh, materials be before we paint. Uh, so <coughs> I would I will use, use some uh, um, some drawing paper. paper. You can use a computer, computer paper, paper if you like, or you know any drawing paper um, to to do the design. The, although you know you can print out the handout, but the handout maybe uh, need to be. Uh, re recomposed to fit the the paper. Uh, somehow, you know, uh, you can you can create your own composition. Actually, uh, you can use the bird gesture and then put uh, the background. Um, yeah, uh, with the, your own design. So that's one way to do that. And this painting was. Uh, let me get that book. Misplaced my book. Sorry, I um. Can you find my book? <laughs> okay, uh, Victoria, trying to find the book. So I I can uh, answer this. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna interrupt. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are going to give away some very large uh, art uh, paper. I believe it's thirty five inches times maybe 28 inches. Um, this is a very smooth surface. I have tested on the watercolor as well as acrylic. It holds up very well. We're giving them away next Thursday at the Biker Library. Uh, if you would like to, to come, you could use it for drawing um, and painting. I'm going to leave the link um, in registration link in the chat. Thank you. Okay. Um, just to, I, I just want to rephrase my. I did find the book. Thank you, Victoria. Um, replace. Okay. Now I have this book here. I want to sh show you the uh, uh, author, the artist of this uh, this painting on the on the left corner, because I was asked in my other class that. Uh, uh, how can uh, uh, females uh, to imitate uh, the Master Chi's uh, masculine lines of brushwork? I think that uh, question is not a sound question because just look at uh, this book and uh, the the student actually more than one student um, studied together with uh, with her. Um, they are all female. So I, I, I know most of you in our class are female students. So t I want to encourage you to, uh, one of the reasons you know, I introduced uh, um, not only master and also her, her, uh, his uh, female students work, just to give you encouragement, inspiration that this painting is not just for men, okay? Not for guys, it's for you. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> You can do better than me. Uh, it, it, the painting, it, the, the brushwork doesn't have any gender difference. Okay, don't ask me that question again if this is a masculine line, the masculine st uh, stroke of yang stroke that uh, female cannot do it. How, that's a wrong question. I'm sorry to, to, uh, to say I won't uh, answer that question if you, if you, you know, if there's a, no difference. Uh, okay. 
in, in different in Chinese painting. So, uh, but there is a method. That's why it's important uh, for the student to follow. That's uh, why this uh, lady, um, she could do it uh, at the first year or second year in her class with the master. So uh, you have to start. It, you have to start with a sketch, and you can use um, pencil or charcoal to do a sketch first, uh, and then um, you outline. You outline the design. Outline each stroke like a stroke guide. So I, I think I showed you earlier in the class uh, that ch that's uh, you know the the design the template uh, that the master use. And then um, you put that behind the, the uh, under the paper, so you paint on top of that. Not only this artist, many other artists, um, many famous uh, figure painter are, uh, you know, they do dancers like Ye Qian Yu. I just heard the story from uh, of eyewitness uh, Professor Yang. Uh, he saw uh, the other artists did the dance, the most famous uh, dancing. Um, Figure painter, he, he used this same method, same exactly same approach. He would outline the figure. He would uh, he would use the ink to trace it, uh, and then put under the rice paper to paint. So don't think it's spontaneous painting anymore. It's a controlled spontaneity. <laughs> okay, it's a trained spontaneity. You have to really control that. But you have to deliver the stroke in in one shot you cannot repeat that's what we call xie or spontaneity okay um so should we start uh doing some birds okay yeah let's do this one okay so for example um um so if i use a small piece like this then i have to alter a little bit um the composition, right? So I, I estimate how large my bird would be. So roughly, this uh, this computer paper would do. So if I use, uh, uh, yeah, if I just paint a bird on this one, and then I can use that as template. I I would, I will paint the background free. So maybe you know we should start drawing this bird together. Uh, so you yeah. I will just use the small uh, reference on the top, uh, on the corner here, so you can see my drawing. You can you can use your handout to, um, on another window or print it out. That's okay. So let's draw a, a, a um, uh, roughly an oval shape for the body. Okay, but you need to estimate the the length of the tail. If you draw the the oval, you know, too close to the top, you don't have room for the tail, right? So you have to. Uh, draw a, a, the body about one uh, one f um, half of uh, the total length. So if you if you draw just a line like a, a slant like that, and then you draw uh, the chest and uh, the tail, and then it's about half. It's the, the oval shape. So you, I think this is a pen, not a pen. Oh, okay, that's good. So you can see better than the pencil. Okay, I just use any 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 tools because this is the template. It's a computer paper. Computer paper first. Okay, um, you draw an oval, sh oval, oval, oval shape for the body. It's like an egg shape to make it easy. Okay, a, an egg shape. Okay, and then um, you draw. Uh, let's do the head then. The head is several curves, um, two curves. One is the head, so you draw a little um, like a bead shape, another oval shape. It could be rounded, right above that. And there's neck, and then uh, this is the back, another curve. Okay, and then uh, that. You, you know, don't don't be afraid. That this is just a draft. If you make you know mistake, just do it. Don't use the eraser. We'll use ink to clear it up. Okay, and then you draw the uh, tail, which is not in the axial the of the you know the same axial 
of the um, the egg the the egg is a little uh, up that shows happiness. So everything should show the happy mood. In this is the personifi personification of a happy mood, right? So you draw this line. There are um, three strokes. Actually, um, one usually done in two strokes, but uh, uh, the you know overlapping. So just like that, it's a uh, uh, and you can you can draw precisely the shape of the stroke. You know, like a, the letter you're filling in the black. You can just do it in one stroke if you like. And then the uh, Th there are two white marks. Okay, here's the back on the um, uh, upper, you know, about two thirds is the, the uh, black back, but it has white marks on the uh, between the wing and the the shoulder. Okay, and uh, so here. Is the white mark and the, this dark in between? And then the the wing is uh, stylized. You know, the, in life the wing is much larger, but uh, in in uh, qi, qi bai shi style, this wing is uh, shortened like that, and just uh, just barely extend to out. You know, to the um, Beyond the, the the egg shape, it's almost there uh, within the egg shape, which is cute, I think. Uh, if you compare to other style of master's painting, and this is the thigh of the of the bird. Okay, uh, a little bit longer extended out uh, from the the egg shape, and then the uh, the the feet. It's it's uh, it's it's the diff most difficult part. That's why we need to do this. I'm sure you cannot do it without a guide, unless you try 100 times, and your success ratio would be one out of 100. If you're lucky, you can still do it. You know, um, but uh, with this kind of uh, control, the method. A student like uh, Guo Xiu Yi um, could do it uh, in the first year of the study. So you draw exactly the the stroke like that, and uh, you know if you make a mistake, you can use eraser. If you use pencil or charcoal, you know you can dust it off. Traditionally, they use charcoal, and this should be a little smaller. Okay, and then this difficult part is uh, the head. I, I will draw a larger one uh, later to show you with brush, but uh, I, at this point I just copy the design. Uh, notice the relationship between the eye and the beak. Um, the real bird, actually the beak is a little lower than the eye, but uh, uh, we follow this style and uh, it looks happier. To to have this high, uh, like beak is higher than, it's it's almost right in front of the the eye, and then um, the curve of the beak is very important to indicate uh, the happiness. But uh, the middle one is not curvy, not that much curvy. Uh, I will talk about the seeing birds later, but it's more difficult and more expressive. Okay, in this in this uh, painting, the happiness is also you know the uh, the sound of the bird singing of this uh, the the bird is seeing uh, is filled like the is with this neck is uh, like swallowed you know with with the chi with the breath so. It, so it's a little fat because it, uh, he's uh, making announcement of good news, right? So this this part is a little uh, convex or con I forgot. <laughs> 
convex or con what is the other curve? The curve out, right? Instead of curve in. Okay. Um, if you cannot, you know, see it, if your pencil mark is too light, you can trace it, or you can actually, yeah, uh, trace it with a brush. But this time you don't, you still don't want to do the um, the uh, calligraphy yet. You want to outline the stroke guide. So that's for you know, for example, you want to draw the shape of this stroke with a outline. So you want to draw the uh, just the dark part, the smear, smearing part, um, the, the soft, you know, the, the gray, you don't have to. So you want to draw this, uh, you know, this wing, this wing. So when you make any copy of Qi uh, Shi, uh, you should do this study like a uh, you know, his, his, his student, student does. does. And, and you can, can make, make notes on coloring, uh, on the tonality. Oops, I think I made a mistake here. I, I, I missed the... Okay, what, what you do, do, I'll show you. If you make a mistake, okay, like this stroke is too large, I, I, I didn't save the white. But you don't have, you, you don't have to use uh, white to correct that. You can... Uh, simply use another color, say the red. You can just use red color to correct if you make a mistake. You know, like uh, here, I'm, I want to make sure this stroke is this big. Or you can just outline with the, uh, and you can just put a X on that, just say this is a mistake. So, so this, this kind, kind of draft is just a as a reference. reference. So you, you should, should you know, feel f if it, it has, has to be as accurate as possible, you can make changes, you can modify it. But later, you, you don't have, have a chance, chance on rice paper, paper. okay? So you, you need to make sure this was... Okay, so you want to read the... This, the stroke, you know, there could be a stroke like that, or you know, the stroke could go the other way. So you want to, you want to define the stroke. Give yourself the stroke guide. Join. It's not for uh, display itself. It's, it doesn't have a, a, any artistic value. Supposedly, just a, a template of design. And you can, um, you don't have to use tonality, but you can you you can write notes. They're saying this is light, you know. You can you can write notes. Oh, light or oh, white. Okay, you can use you can use right. You can say this is light light line. This is white. You something just to, for you for yourself to understand uh, something. You don't have to fill in this, this space, so it's easier to, to read. And you can even outline these uh, uh, legs with a very thin line. Uh, this is a car, you know, shape. Or you can just use one stroke, it doesn't matter, as long as it, it helps you to you don't have to do it in one stroke at this time, but uh, later you have to, you have to do, you have to um, fill in the, the shape, and doing the, the shape in one stroke, like, like this. Okay. So, for this painting, I, you know, you can also design the, the, uh, uh, Branches. If you need an, an, you know, an extra 
Uh, you can use a different paper and then you can you know, move around. You can make it the, uh, adjust it if you want. So I'm, I'm using this charcoal to, to, to do this part, uh, this hind branches, because um, the, the line crossing is very complicated. Sometimes uh, you need to have some guideline. Um, the principle of doing the branches is to to vary the angle of each line to avoid parallel and also vary the length of each section. So it, it, when you draw a line, you divide it into uh, different uh, uh, phases. You know, you, you can have paths in between, and you but each section is uh, different. Let me, this one is not a typical, very clean example that makes me even doubt the authenticity of this painting, you know. Uh, but because this is in the background, in the back, it's supposed to look, you know, farther than the bird, so it, it's a little bit softer, it's more blurry. Uh, but I see a main diagonal movement from this corner here. Uh, you know, I, I can change a little bit. I just follow my my uh, principles. So this, I vary the length of this line and the angle. You can make uh, um, sharp or, or angular turns. Angular means not curved. So that creates this kind of a woody um, feel. Not like a grass, so you got like an orchid. Stroke is uh, curvy, right? Okay, I'm going to make a crossing. Uh, the crossing, I try to identify the character woman in, in Chinese. This, uh, this character is used in the Master Artist's Garden Manual of Painting because uh, when you make a crossing, you you will see this uh, shape, the negative shape. Um, so I see here. I want to change a little bit. It's it's very um, hard to avoid the the parallels, and you don't want to make a, uh, a you know like a rectangular or uh, you can make a triangle but not a uh, equal triangle so yeah you, it's it's good to make triangles let's do this one and i try to improve <laughs> a little bit if i could that here. Yeah, it, you know, you can spend lots of time to, you know, this is parallel, right? Okay. And then you can dust it off. I can use uh, just the tissue. It dust off. <coughs> anyway. Uh, you can then use ink to um, confirm the correct one. But sometimes even it's parallel, one is, is in the front is solid and uh, uh, one is uh, uh, dry and soft. So this is the most difficult part of uh, this painting actually. And you can make uh, something like that even. Okay, um, we also need to leave space between uh, branches for the, for the um, flowers. Okay.
Usually, when you introduce a branch, okay, it should be um, one of the eight spots in other than the middle. And uh, if you have two, one should be more dominant. Um, one is uh, the host and one is the guest. So here I'm not very clear, so I start to, to doubt the authenticity of this painting. <laughs> anyway, anyway don't, don't trust the, uh, the sample painting completely. You have to use your, your own judgment. Um, so you want to make one more dominant, one uh, guest. You can combine this. You can make this one thicker you know, as a host, and that will be a guest. OK? Uh, or you can call it a major, major uh, branch and the supporting branch. Uh, if we, we use the term host guest to refer to the leading role and the supporting role of uh, uh, different elements. Okay, <coughs> so let's, let's, let's make a first attempt with these uh, preliminary studies. We can. I, I didn't draw the the trunk under the bird. I think uh, we can uh, we can do that without the draft, right? So I'm going to put this bird um, relatively okay lower lower right lower left. Um, this my, my paper is a little wider, but I will write the description on, on, on this side, so it's okay, I think. So it's a interesting uh, composition. It look, it, usually, you leave more room in front of the bird, but in this case, the the, the tail of the bird, uh, looking up, you know, the, it gives it more attention to the to the. Uh, the hand branches. When we talk about the movement, uh, this this direction, this this circulation, you know, the inscription goes down and goes, uh, the branch hang down and then, um, yeah, it goes like a loop, right? The, the also the branch, I mean the trunk goes up. So that's uh, if you put the bird right in the middle, you will don't you will not have that. Uh, Dynamics. Uh, so we need to put this on the corner, almost like like this. Be very sensitive to the movement of. Uh, so you leave a lot of space, a lot of negative space. Okay. I'm gonna use uh, the leftover ink from the calligraphy class earlier. Just pure ink. Uh, it will be a little gray in the in the bottom of the brush. So let me just clean this to get some gray. That's okay. But basically, you just need a solid dark. Dark ink. You could grind the bottled ink with the ink stick if you have on the ink stone that creates most uh, the best tone and the uh, body of uh, ink um, if you directly use uh, the bottled ink it, it might be not thick enough or if you use the uh, grind ink it's not dark enough so the best is the combination of both words okay and you use pure ink because we, we will start from the head. Usually, uh, he he does he, he does that first, and I kind of squeeze out the extra ink. Just put it on the side. So the the happy bird, Xi uh, Chue, magpie is only uh, black and white, right? But we need to save the white. Extremely important to save that. The white belly and the white uh, marks on the uh, uh, between the wing and the, the shoulder. Okay, the the first stroke I'm going to do is the top of the head. 
the eye is not in the middle, okay? So you could draw the eye, maybe that's easier. Just a dot. Oh, be very careful because it could blur right away. And you can use a testing paper if it, you know, of the same kind to test the wetness. That's, uh, and you can draw. Um, we, my teacher would call this uh, uh, eyeglass, eyeglasses kind of, but you don't have to put the, a perfectly round shape. Actually, he, he would draw the beak. Yeah, this has to be very pure and relatively dry, just like a calligraphy brush would do. I use a mixed, uh, mixed hair brush, combination brush, soft and stiff combination brush to do the whole thing in one brush. You can use a stiff brush, a small brush to do the detail, uh, like uh, the head part, and then use a larger one to do the feather. Okay, so I'll, I'll draw this center line first. Okay, and then a curve line. Uh, I I think it's easier to draw from uh, from outside in, so you just press down like that. You can also do it like that, you know. Uh, lift the brush to get the point. Doesn't really matter. Um, you can, you know, you can, you can just for the convenience. Usually, we we put a little dot for the nose hole, nas nasal hole. But uh, he omitted that. This is a what we call the big shei, large shei. So many details are omitted. Okay, this. There's a gap between the neck and the, the um, beak, which is really important, I think. If you connect them, it will make the birds angry, <laughs> I guess. OK, very important to leave a little white void. So what you do is you, uh, you, can, you can flatten the head a little bit, make the brush a little flat. And then start with a little gap between the beak and the neck doing this 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 part. Just putting you can repeat a little bit, uh, cheat a little bit, but don't too much because it will blur. And when that before that happens, you should use the blotting paper. So hold a piece of paper. Uh, yeah, just blot it before it gets away from the shape. Okay, now I'm going to continue. And uh, you can go slow so the with a dry brush and then blotting paper that that controls the the shape, okay. Okay, now we, we should do, we, we should feel more freer. And uh, the back should be dark, very dark. The neck actually could be a little lighter than the back yeah, because it moves, gives a feeling of uh, mobility. Uh, the back part is more stable. So it's more uh, firm, okay. And uh, so it's good to have some smearing. So you can you can just press a little bit more, and uh, I use cleaner. I use tissue to blot it. Okay. <coughs> And then I just finish the dark. I, I corrected this earlier. And this should all follow the shape of the a neck, right? So 
no, don't go too much beyond the act shape. A little bit extension there for the wing. That's very shortened uh, for the style. And this 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 middle part be, uh, between the tail and the lower back it's kind of soft. You can later fill in with grays. Okay. So we just do the dark first. And I reload the brush with a fully wholly loaded black to do the tail. You don't want it to uh, to be too soft because that's uh, even more important for the whole painting. It's like uh, the it shows the happy mood with a raised tail. Okay, just one stroke. That is very challenge. Um, I th I think. Um, Either way, we find you know you can if you draw from outside in, it will be pressing and the lifting is a little bit so it becomes uh, from thick to narrow. Or you can press and end and then gradually lift it. But it's like a, to write the uh, press press stroke in calligraphy, okay? And I got more ink, I just realized that it's not dark enough. Okay, I just put more ink there. Okay, I just do one shot. Okay. And uh, the thigh, and uh, you know you cannot go back to repeat. So that's it. I think the other uh, part is a little lighter, so I'm going to wash the brush. But I don't really need to wash. I just use the tissue to dry the brush, and I add a little water. That's it. Dry the brush so the the water is clean. Right. Just add a little water to the tip of the brush. That's enough. And just draw. Uh, it's not dark, light enough. Uh, yeah, that's too light, but that's OK. Um, and then just, uh, you can wait a little bit to fill in uh, a little more. OK, the lower part of the body is white. right? And then uh, just keep going and fill in some blanks with the water. You want to soften a little bit, but it depends. So you you should you need you need to make judgment here. You know what to leave, what to uh, blur. So it's really which part is softer. You know, it really depends. And everybody should end up different. Even you copy the same same uh, master, everybody will be showing their personality because we all have the our own uh, traits going to into the painting. Personal traits is uh, personified personified in a painting. That's good. Okay. Oh, uh, actually this. This beak it should be a little lighter, but it's okay. I think you can just use dark. Um, you see, I I, I I tend to do this uh, claw first, and then the leg. Okay, just like writing, and you can put a little dot. Uh, for the nail, a little bit, okay, just a tiny, and that's uh, more like a small uh, shi, but uh, if it, if you you can get it in one stroke, it's it's better. It's more uh, we call the 
uh, large 企业一啊 large spontaneous star. Okay, so that's my magpie, and、uh, I'm not gonna do repeat anything. I I always tend to oops too dark. You can blot it、uh, if it's too dark, you know, a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to do the branch with the gray. So that this time I I just wash up、uh, ink with water. I get a and I I I'll put this paper on the bottom. It gives a little guideline. I I don't have to follow exactly, but.、Uh, Uh, you can use this as, you know, for your future reference. Actually, I have a tip. If you want to keep it from staining, you can put a、uh, transparency on that. But actually, this, it is better to have some absorbency that takes extra. It serves like a pad.、Um, yeah. It, but if you want to protect、uh, your template, you can use the transparency. In between. Okay. Now I'm going to draw the、uh, upper branch, which is more important than the ground. The ground could be just you know ground without a trunk, right? But we cannot we cannot finish the painting without this upper part. So my template is smaller than. The design that won't help, but I'm, I'm going to use it anyway. Just show you the method. You know, it's supposed to be exactly what I need, but you can,、um, yeah, you don't have to. I don't have to follow exactly, but it gave me some idea to start with. It's better than nothing, right? To have some hint、uh, of your draft. So I, I'll I'll use uh, uh, tip concealed stroke, which means. Hold the brush straight, perpendicular to the paper, and use the tip、uh, of the brush only, and keep the tip in the middle of the brush as much as you can. Not use a slant brush like this. Okay, use straight brush, and you can start from outside the picture, so it doesn't.、Uh, uh, you can put something. Let me just take this white sheet away. Yeah, you can start from outside. There. Okay, and then too too wet. But that's <laughs> how I got the. You can see the smearing. It's okay that because、uh, it's in the background, so it's to be softer. So you go down and you kind of curve up and dry. You know that's. One stroke, and then you do、um, a branch that cross. It goes down like that, and it has have a split. Okay, and、uh, you can now introduce another branch that goes. You could be、um, split from this main branch, or you can introduce from another. Spot like that.、Uh, it's not very clear on this sample,、um, but when you do it, you should make up your mind without hesitation. Okay. I'll just follow my. I'll leave some、uh, some space be between the stroke is good. You can make hard crossing like that, or you can avoid hard crossing. But in Chi Bai Shi's painting, he always use hard hard crossing, and just leave a little small gap on the tip. It's okay.、Um, so I try to avoid parallel, but this one goes all the way down, almost here. So you need to find the next stop before you go. Okay, so it will go down.、Um, so this is, will be too straight. Let's let's introduce another one. Goes down there, 
And this will go up. This. And make a crossing. You can make a soft crossing which uh, leave a gap between the two and put, it, put uh, flowers later. Okay, and uh, I leave some gaps here and there. So I'm going to continue. Um, you can go outside the frame. Don't be afraid to do that. And uh, okay, here's another chance to make a triangle. Um, you go like that. Leave some gap there for flowers. And you can make a, a little small triangle like that, right? <coughs> and uh, here we have some hanging branches. Sometimes the line uh, may be not in the same uh, branch, but uh, it forms a continuity in, in picture. So that, that kind of movement is also interesting to have. Okay. Try to make triangular shape all the time, and uh, not even triangles. Okay, the three sides are, are different. Okay, that's about it. And just make another branch. It should keep it consistency, so you don't make the the uh, branches pointing to. For all four directions, generally it goes down diagonally towards the bird. It's a diagonal, diagonal movement. Okay, and just do, do that. That's it. And uh, while the brush is dry, uh, I'll do the trunk. Move this out so you can see a clean copy here. <coughs> okay. So this this line is almost parallel to the to the uh, tail uh, because it's so light. It's okay, but uh, we can make a little adjustment. And you want to the branches lower than the tip, so it's end there. So you can push the brush, pushing the brush like that. Still, you know, tip can conceal tip in the middle, but it's pushing to get the roughness of the uh, uh, texture, you know, like uh, like this. Almost like painting pine, tree, pine uh, trees, but th there's no scale like pine tree. So I push the brush, or plowing, you can use the uh, metaphor like plowing, uh, the pl plowing to on earth, and then like a, the peasant use. It's, it's, uh, the Tip is in front of the uh, pointing to the movement, the direction of the movement. That's plowing. It, it creates rough strokes, but don't use side brush stroke. Still, um, you can pull like this, pull, uh, plow, and uh, just repeating like that. And it seems like a, a curve there, a turn, a sharp turn there. That creates some. Interest. Okay, and so the white, the highlight part, not right in the middle. So sometimes on this side, sometimes shift to this side. So this is shady part. This is shady part. Uh, that alternate. So they they're not equally. Uh, if there's a bark. I mean, there's a uh, hole there somehow. You don't have to define, but this kind of uh, uh, alternation is uh, the creator uh, variety. If you just you know shade equally on both sides, it it it, it feels boring. Yeah. Okay. Then 
or change a brush, uh, you need uh, a softer brush or mixed uh, hair brush, a, a blend of uh, soft and uh, stiff is okay. You have, you, I think the softer brush is even better if you use a, a pure soft, you, know, you can use a large brush if you want to do the From the previous class, the all the reds, which is good. You can use all the reds because he used not more than one. You can see some uh, some orange color, which is uh, from the vermilion, and some um, some mostly the the pink color is diluted uh, carmine, just like cherry we learned, we used. Uh, so a blend of a cherry. Vermilion and the and the rouge. Rouge is uh, preserved m uh, m mainly for the uh, calyx. You can use pure ink, but you can also use pure rouge to do the calyx stamen and the pollen. He doesn't use any uh, white because this is a large or. Uh, Mostly free style, large free style, freehand style. They don't. He doesn't use the. You know the white colors. Okay. Um, let me use a smaller brush. This is the basic soft brush, and I blend two colors: um, the vermilion and the carmine to get a basic uh, uh, light color uh, for the. And you can you you can touch a little bit. Um, we also have something like a you know um, peony red. You know. I don't have it in the f in the twenty twenty. I mean in the twelve. You can find individual tips. That's also good. So a gradation from uh, vermilion, carmine, and the rouge. Uh, um, here we have a group of uh, flowers. Let me show you the flowers. So the flowers is composed of a th a three, uh, I'm not three, five petals. Five is a good number. It's called, it's also a symbolism called Wu Fu. They represent just three, uh, f uh, five happiness. Sorry, I keep saying, saying that. Uh, Five happiness. I don't know which five. Maybe you'll know what we'll find out later for like for, for us. Wu Fu. Five blessings, I think. Five blessings, yeah. So the f the pedal is five. But we, we don't outline in, in with when we do it with color, so we just paint uh If you have done good at uh, cherries, shouldn't be no problem. Should shouldn't be a problem. Right? Okay. It's a little bit too orange. You can have three larger, two smaller. Uh, that's a full, full view, like from um, a top view. You you can also have a side view. Uh, let's do it here. It's a little flatter. You have three in the front and the two behind. So you do the front first, and the, the brush will naturally turn lighter. When you load the brush with a little darker on the tip, we do this. Okay, can you see it here? Let me do another one. So one, two, three. That's at the front, and then um, do, we, do I see a six there? Well, sometimes it overlaps, so you can add extra flowers behind you see that you can add a but so not all the flowers in five you can there are a lot of but the, the you should indicate all different uh, blooming stages 
budding and then blooming stages and different directions notice each flower has a direction it's usually facing either you know down or, or up uh, okay this one goes facing down right and uh, it will be attached to the to the um, branch with the calyx but you don't want to uh, pinch the flower too far from the branch so just uh, be aware of the distance and you can have little gap and then you put in uh, calyx to fill in so you, you can leave gap between the strokes there are also some back view ones you know you you you, you just pinch behind the, the branch like that and then you put the calyx later okay and if you keep going the br the brush will become uh, lighter and you also drier you you paint slower when that happens and without reloading that creates some uh, natural um, gradation to create a, a sense of uh, perspective so when the brush w when the brush is lighter you do the branches which is farther from the viewer okay and so i started the lower then the back and you can reload the same way mixing three colors at least you can do you know more than three if you have more different uh, like a uh, you can also use a uh, scallop or um, peony or you can use crimson and uh, uh, power red in watercolor which is it's also fine if you don't wet mount them okay so I will add grouping is very important so they are not spread uh, equally scattered so I, I I have to put some overlapping even some uh, something closer and uh, some small one also and uh, here um, try to make some parts really dense really dense with more flower concentrated and so and leave some white uh, you know also be aware of the negative shape that you save okay and you can have flowers that's half outside the frame that's okay to suggest more flowers or oh, some behind you know just to use soft color and some leaves uh, some branches it's, it's uh, more empty which is good. Uh, we call that chi branch. Has no flowers on it, with uh, only the the uh, uh, chi. <laughs> the, usually the new branch, the straight one, in, uh, you, you see on the, those trees, new growth, like a new, newer branch. They are straight without uh, any petals on. So I, 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 I put all the petals mainly on uh, the top, maybe just leave this area because if it's all filled up, you will, f you will stuff, you will um, stagnate the flow of uh, the qi, the energy. Okay, um, let me s just keep an eye on the hole when you when you, uh, you can look at it for me I look at the image uh, on my video I can even look at the mirror image here so I can see better the composition it, you can see in the mirror so, uh, yeah, to check the qi movement um, okay and after it dries a little bit, not you know completely dry, you can do the calyx and the stamen. I'll show you how to do that. That's another um, 
difficult part, uh, you, you can use a small brush, uh, a red hair brush, this I think we have a Jiren Bo Nian uh, line, liner, and uh, we even have this, uh, in Chinese it's called the DMA, meaning uh, dot, dot plant. But uh, in English, um, it's known, commonly known as a happy dot. So we uh, adapted that to adapt that name, that translation for DMA, because it can also be used um, for other purposes, not to just uh, dot the plums. But here, you use you, you. It's uh, it's the best time to use if you have a happy dot brush. Use that, or you can use a small whistle brush in the in the uh, uh, basic. But it's maybe a little too small for the calyx. It's good for the stamen. The calyx needs to be a little heavier in this one. Uh, you can mix a little bit ink to to the rouge. You can use pure ink if you want. I think on the original painting here, it is a pure ink. So maybe we just use black, because like this dark color, you you, you have to use ink to, uh, to to show. Okay, and if you enlarge it, let me show you. Um, you should see there's a little circle in the middle. I guess let me see if it is there. No. Okay. So he doesn't do the circle. Oh, maybe there's a little hint. I can see a little bit. In oh, there's one. So you don't have to do the circle unless it's a full view from top, not in the side view there. Um, okay, I think this, this one, one probably is a good, good imitation of Chibesh. Got, got too, too many lines. Too, 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 too thin lines. lines. It, it could, could be fewer lines. lines. But, but that's, that's a good, good, uh, good imitation. The, the dot is a little. Uh, too, too too rough. rough. It could be more rounded. Okay, okay. that's it. That's good to see, right? Do you need to practice? You you can sit and do that. Let me show you. Uh, so the the first thing I want to caution you is to let me just draw this uh, guideline again. Just circles. So, so if, if you, you if you, you put, put the uh, uh, circle, circle you put it in the middle of the, the, the flower, flower in the center, center of the flower. flower. Now, now the, the lengths length of the stamen are, are not, not too long or too short. short. Uh, it, should it should be like, like that. that. A little, sh a little uh, less than the size, the size of, of the flower, flower. right? And yeah. then you put the the dots. It's a little tricky on this one. Um, don't do this. If I don't say this, everybody will do this, I'm sure. You see what's wrong? <coughs> you don't need to match the dots with the um, statement, okay? If you look at uh, closely here, there's no one-to-one -one match, okay? If you if you do this, you won't pass. Okay, <laughs> you understand? All right. With that in mind, uh, let's go. So it's just black. You can use if your if your petals are lighter than mine. You can use uh, you know a dark rouge, maybe with a little ink. But uh, I'll just use dark because dark also echoes the dark in the bird. I think in this painting that create harmony and stylize uh, everything. If you use color, then it doesn't match. It doesn't match. So this one has to be more subtle. It could be you know the grays or something. It's a very different uh, approach. I think. So I'll just draw with dark ink. And then dot, dot with a the rhythm. So some close, some 
uh, some uh, some spars around the stamen, but not exactly match. You don't need to match, and uh, you can see some big dots. Those are those stands for the calyx. This is a stamen, and then he 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 uh, typically he would also do a pistol, which is longer in the uh, uh, center of a. But you don't have to. I think we can omit that. But the calyx is like uh, like this. Usually, the, if this is the butt, right? But on on the flower, like the front view, he still put this to just to, um, to fix it on the branch. You know, just the uh, one of the dots could have a tail, uh, but you can see there are some dots just. Uh, Generally, near. Let's just do this. So that 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 indicates the back of uh, if you if you put uh, you know some some dots there or a little a little line showing on the other side of the petal. So that's the back view. Okay, and and in this on this handout you can see some. Yeah, back view here, some side view there. So the, it's all different. That that this is the time to to define them. So this is the side view to dry. So this dust could stay inside. Could also go a little beyond, and it's all okay. Okay, and. Uh, this one is a, like a three-quarter view, something like that. And a little white between the dots, the, between the petals, really uh, bring life. If you, if you, if your all your petals has no white in between, that's dead. Yeah. Okay. I, I usually do it in three strokes, like writing the character Xiao, um, but I, I I do the two dots first, and then this, or you can, you know, just something like that. Uh, you can just put the dots without the tail. That's uh, my habit. My teacher always had the tail, that uh, the little stem, I call it the tail, like a, um, we call nail head uh, brush stroke. Right? Nail head, a little rat tail, but not that long. It's just nail head with a, okay. And it looks like a, my weather is very dry. We got a wind, very dry wind these days. So I have to do this, do this fast. Before it gets completely dry, it will be stiff. Try not to match the dot exactly on the top of the stem. That's uh, that's very stiff, you know. That if you do that, okay. You can do the calyx first if you want. Uh, I just put uh, some very uh, suggestive ones on this because it's uh, not as uh, uh, important as this part. And, uh, you can even put more dots. Um, to suggest more, um, but you know, I, I, sometimes I, yeah, I think they're two. Usually they come in pairs, but don't have to. But not exactly left and right pair, you know. They like group, I would say. So one small one, little larger, and but if it does, 
you don't have to put another dot. You just put a dot that already indicated, implicated that kind of uh, grouping. Uh, just uh, finish the. Okay, so don't check everything, and you can put some extra dots if you need it. Just it could be statement, could be you know whatever. Just kind of tighten things up. Um, other artists may do mask dots on the branch, but we don't have it here. I mean, Chilash's painting is simplified. No mask dots. Okay, that's it. Uh, there's no color, I think, on the. Do I see? I, I don't see any. Sometimes we color the beak in by some art, some other artist, but we don't do this to keep it simple. So just uh, write uh, the title. Uh, I think we may write the more common phrase, 洗在, 洗上眉梢, instead of 洗在眉头. This is like a uh, spoken language, because Chibashi is not a uh, literati to begin with. He, he, he become a literati later, but uh, he taught himself uh, um, poetry. Um, poem writing, uh, he, but uh, he he appears his painting more appeared to the common people. So he writes spoken language. She uh, in written language will say she shang mei shao, right? She shang mei shao. But this is a, a seal script. I'll just write uh, the standard script. Okay. Okay, here we must write this eyebrows just to confuse people, <laughs> not confuse people, just to, um, we don't change the, the word of the original phrase. This, because this character, eyebrows, it pronounced the same, oh, Oh yeah, I I can still do that. Shao right. I I'm writing the mei almost. The the like a plum. You don't write plum. You write a, uh, eyebrow. Shao shao means the uh, tip tip of a, uh, of the the high tip. You know the twig uh, of a branch. So if if I write a plum. It will be plum branch. But here means eyebrow uh, above or raised. Yeah, raised eyebrow. Meishao means the tip of the eyebrow. Raised means, yeah, sun, raised. You understand the play of words? Very uh, Chinese. Okay. And he says, um, 八十九,白石, meaning 89. If you are 80 something, you can write that, your, your own age. So uh, let me just copy his, and then I will write my name. So we copy everything. To we just show you the culture, OK? And he write 89. And he that that don't have to write the sui the the uh, character for uh, the year or uh, years old. <laughs> this is interesting. He just draw a circle for the stone, and uh, he use an. Uh, uh, nickname or pen name, Mu Ren, meaning carpenter. He's, he was a carpenter, so he, his seal says carpenter. And I'll just write uh, my, my own name and the year. So we write uh, the original title. A smaller signature, then I write 
my signature in s smallest uh, size. So that just uh, create. Yeah, you can write the word uh, mimic or something like that. Oh, I just enough. I, I just sign my name. Put a seal. There, there is another seal on the bottom. I think maybe let's look at that. Look for that later. So this one, um, the seal should match the character of the signature. So this is too big. Smaller. I have a small one here. Try to follow his style. Okay. That's a V, and that's nothing. So th that's the year that the uh, signature of mine. And uh, you can put the seal there, or I think not here because it's on the same side. Let me see. Let me see if there's seal on the corner. Yeah, it is there, but um, oh, his branch starting from uh, started from this side, so there's a gap. There's a space on the corner, but I don't have that space, so I don't think we we, we need to do that. It's uh, a mood seal. Um, it's hard to read. It's I, I learn from uh, something <laughs> I will guess something like uh, from natural or some uh, or ancient uh, master something like that it's, it's about uh, um, his uh, inheritance or something I, I, I have to study that seal it's not readable here <laughs> sorry Okay, let me let me turn make this smaller so you can compare to to mine. Okay, we got a uh, result from uh, um, Yong Le about the five blessings. Uh, the five blessings are longevity, riches, richness, uh, health, morality, and uh, good health. Okay. So that's the uh, five blessings of uh, the uh, five petal flower. And uh, I feel there is a little bit uh, gap here. Maybe we can close that just to look at because uh, this three tip is uh, almost the same. Uh, we want to have one finishing. We want finishing. Uh, if this is the starting, uh, the introduction, uh, in, uh, the the introduction of the the the, uh, the uh, movement. This is developing, uh, turning, finishing. The four phases. Uh, you should you should have a complete. Uh, the finishing should be complete. That's the only part. Uh, yeah. This is the turning. It goes up, turning. Just like uh, writing an essay, you have an opening statement, elaborating a development, and a turning kind of a uh, uh, yeah turning. I don't know what what uh, we we'll use uh, for the writing. 
turn in, in painting is we call it turning change of direction um, maybe a, a, a um, argument you know then a, a different argument and then uh, finishing then uh, the com completion c conclusion the conclusion should be f uh, complete many people do not have a complete uh, part of the composition it, it, it goes you know um, beyond the frame so that's not very good okay that if you look at more uh, I can tell you some other cultural interesting cultural references um, another taboo I like to talk is the the plum also pronounced as a uh, bad luck may right in Chinese uh, language so sometimes uh, my teacher to told me when I learned this don't paint upside down branch but Chi Bai Shi may have done that but with uh, birds standing on that so so birds standing on them may it change the luck so even the, the branch like here you have an upward um, branch many you know but this is okay and they, the Chi goes up you know you see the if all the branches goes down, it's it's dumb. It, it it brings you back. It means uh, bad luck in Chinese. Dumb. And see, my teacher would do the branch from uh, lower corner to up corner that goes up. That's typical uh, because he's very conscious about uh, the taboo and uh, try to avoid. Because people won't buy the painting if the branch is upside down. You understand? This is upside down, but the, the chi goes up. So that this this branch changes the the luck. You know, it goes up. So that contest the up branch goes up, and the you know the the chi goes up. If uh, all the if this bird's looking down, and then everything will be done. So the up uh, mode, upward mo mo uh, movement is very important. Okay, and I have this handout for some details on uh, directions of painting statement. Even <laughs> I did this handout in 1990, 1990 when I first taught a class in um, University of Washington campus. And extension costs. Yeah. Okay. Do you understand uh, how to make crossing? The, look at the shape, uh, the negative shape. It's all uh, like the character uh, woman, right? It's like the space with the force uh, strokes, like a, a little. Um, Not square, but uh, this kind of shape. That's very important. So double happiness is another uh, theme we often see for wedding, for wedding gift. Uh, but you know, if you paint someone as a for wedding, you do two happy birds. I'm going to. Do I have time? Uh, Eleven fifteen. We have half an hour, right? So I'm going to do the happy bird, uh, the double happiness. Double, two birds uh, represent a couple, happy couple, right? So uh, again, it's a it's a slow it looks a slow but actually it's fast if we do the study first you know we, we just draw a template first let's just draw this first and uh, let's say if we can do it uh, um, I think it's better just do the vertical because it's too difficult to compose within a short time a short period of time so let's just do the a quick drawing of the birds. You know, you can make mistakes and it could be dust off. 
So I, I just draw um, the uh, the main shape of the the birds. This time, because I already did one time that I'm familiar with the style now. Um, and look at this sh heart shape it forms. Interesting. It's almost like a heart. Oh, interesting. So look at uh, Yeah, th this must be a little closer. So when I copy, I'll move it. i move the template around. So it's lower. Oh, they should be closer. <coughs> So all this kind of mistake could, could happen on this paper. So um, if it's on rice paper, you know, you have to do it again. Um, it doesn't work. Let me just turn it on. So this is a drawing paper. So let's, let's do better. We, we will do the two head first. It's... Uh, So forget about the, the the flower. We just have to fit in the. And so we can make the the birds smaller. Maybe that's the only way to do this. A small smaller piece of paper. So this 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 is the, the one. It's almost uh, identical in directions. It's almost the same, but only difference is this goes that way, and this goes this way. And uh, this, it's almost like, uh, so this is really close, kissing each other. That's, that's how close it will be. One, one um, proposing, one, this is like a girl, right? This one is the girl, this is the boy. Okay, something like that. You know, you can just practice on this. You don't have to put this behind. This will teach you a lot. Most mistake I've seen, um, in, you know, including myself, is the drawing mistake. The drawing part. The drawing part is the... You see, I already made mistakes. So this is a really um, challenge part. So, so by, by practicing this, you you probably can do it, you know in end. You don't have to. You don't have to put it you know behind the the, uh, the rice paper. So just practice, and then try to understand the perspective. The look at the, the whole shape of the black. The relationship. That's it. Something like that. Okay. So I I, I did uh, uh, enough study so I can I feel com comfortable just to draw it. I'm just paint it without that. To see what happens. Uh, you can you can put your chart beside you just to or just look at the. Let's just enlarge it. Just do this birds part. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do the. Uh, I should do the head. I know uh, the head is most important. So we we'll just do the detail part. It's a very different approach than my teacher. He would do the back first, but uh, Chibashi is a very more traditional, and uh, he would do the the eye first, I think. So this this bird, there that bird, it's this is how close it is, very close. So I'm going to draw this beak right away, and. Uh, He's listening to OK. 
Okay, then this, yeah, I, I think it, the how large is another question, you know, even you draw this, it, it, it could be too, too large. It, there's no room for the bird. So, see, if you don't have this kind of sketch, almost impossible, <laughs> almost impossible to do. Even this kind of sketch, like, uh, you know, I feel like a Raphael, this is pencil drawing. <laughs> Even it's rough, so it it helps. You know, it multi with multiple line. You know, when we're not, we, I don't have time to clean it up, but it it helps. It, 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 I know already the, the the head is too large. If I continue, there's no room for the tail. So you learn from my mistake. You learn from my mistake. Me learn more from my mistake than my success demo, right? So now I can I can certainly fit in my bird without a question because I already did preliminary sketch of it. I feel I, now I can concentrate on the stroke without to worry about the uh, space, everything already soft with that under drawing. So this one goes up. I'm using a smaller brush too because uh, it will be smaller to fit in the two birds. Uh, so this one this is a very high there. That's the back. And uh, the wing. I just use this uh, happy dots. And the wing there. Uh, this painting is done by uh, Ping's uh, mother. Ping's uh, on vacation today. I thank Ping for providing this uh, um, high resolution image for the class. The tail, okay. It's not perfectly straight. There are two strokes. You can see that, right? So, it goes up one, goes second, and you can add a little one in between. I think a little tip. Okay. When I start to repeat, you see another mistake. Don't repeat. No perfect uh, stroke. But repeat certainly will make it worse. Okay, and uh, this leg should be a little like that. <coughs> so, oh, we we'll just do the dark for convenience, uh, the both boys, and we'll go back to for the light when I lighten the ink. So, I'm gonna just clean up all the dark here. His his bird is a little uh, his the eye is so rounded so that's g gives a very happy feel and this one is very smiling see the curve that I show you later the curve of the beak it's very important see the beak curves like like that. Th this this part is very important. If you if you do it wrong, you can make it uh, angry. Um, many people, mo most people, my student would do this. Okay, this is wrong. This is a smile. This is a like a I don't know angry. Okay, see the curve, the difference there? It's this, this stroke. You can omit that bottom one. So, but this curve bends down, it, that, that makes, you can even you know, put a tongue there. But uh, in this style, I don't do these details. And uh, leave a large white 
around the eye makes it happier. Don't have to be round, a little bit squarish at the front, yeah? And uh, a little hair uh, proposing. Okay, that's it. I made the eye too big, but uh, that's okay. I want to exaggerate to show you the white. And I can make it smaller now. You can start from a large one, and then you can easily. You cannot add any white back. That's the the challenge part. So just make it larger. I mean, yeah. Then then you can eliminate it if you don't need that much. Okay, I think I need more ink. Alright. The wing. Leave a little white between the, the shoulder and uh, the, uh, the wing, right? The wing has a little bit length, just a little bit. And this one kind of, you know, not only the uh, beak, the mouth, uh, the beak talks to each other, also, you know, the tail. The tail part. Don't repeat, Henry. Okay. That's the thigh. A little rounded, you know. Everything is rounded, so so uh, fame, fame, fame kind of uh, very subtle. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to draw this leg. It's dark though. Okay. This leg is almost almost uh, touching the beak. Uh, very close. That's a very nice gesture. And this one, uh, where it, it's tucked under the under the body. I have the body already, so I'm going to... For, for the leg, it's very important to, s to see the, gra uh, the gravity. The gravity is most important than anything else. So if you put it in the wrong place, it, the birds will not uh, stable, feel not uh, f stable. Okay. So I haven't done any light here, just for the convenience. You can use a different brush if you want. To, uh, so instead of wash the brush, I, I just maybe use a, another brush for the for the light. Okay, so let me fill in some light. Okay, this is the the egg shape we talked about. The, the shoulder. Okay, this 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 that line is the belly, and uh, some light color, the wing, combine the wing, connect the wing to the back. Okay, a little bit loose hair, but not too much. You can even omit that if you want. Okay, so that's the um, the wing is not enough here. We can add back a little bit like that. Okay. Now the branches, um, you can use a uh, larger brush maybe. Instead of reload too much. The, the branch is lighter than the bird. In a dark gray. You can make a large gray. Okay, and uh, <coughs> let me look at the whole thing. We have to recompose the image. So it goes from this side, yeah, goes down. And you can also, it's not, it should, should not, you know, should avoid the 
corner definitely. So you go uh, either here or here. Okay, let's just do this. F just follow the original. It's easier. And then goes under the under the cloud. It goes kind of avoid the beak very subtle and it goes under the beak a little bit okay if you can get this it's okay but uh, that's uh, that's hard uh, you see I missed a little bit that size so we can just fill in a little okay. and then Um, logically, I think this leg should be on a branch, so maybe another branch is needed. S or you can make you can make that line all the way across to here instead of there. So we just extend that. Um, I will introduce another branch. Maybe it's uh, more logical. Just go down like that. Okay, this will be in the front, then we can just do, just go very broad first, and then you use rules to to find out to how to solve the puzzle. So you just, you know, just look at the negative shape, avoid, avoid what, avoid um, parallels, right, and this one goes from a knee. And this actually could, could. So I have this shape first. Then I uh, make up, you know, this part. So, it, and I also solve this. This shape. So I look at uh, the negative, more. Then the the uh, interpretation of that, positive. So now I'm creating some more crossing. Uh, it looks complicated, but the rule is very simple: no parallel, no uh, same lens, and uh, you can you know sharp turns, not curve. Just you know when you make it, you can make a uh, bending, a folding instead of a turning, it's like like this. It's okay, and uh, no parallel, no same lens, and this could go back, go up. You can make up, and uh, some dance, some sparse, also uh, very important. So this is like a two parallel. Break that parallel with an additional branch, and I'll make some upward uh, to finish. So that that's very important. Now I don't have a finish, right? A complete finish. So that. Uh, actually, I like that uh, part. It, it has flowers like uh, in between the, the birds. So let me just follow that. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, this uh, this if this trunk is go going down, you cannot have a branch that goes up. Uh, this this up up line is from this this branch. Okay, that goes up. It's okay. All right. Uh, I have like uh, ten minutes. So I have to finish the flowers. I I blend the vermilion with a little root or carmine, whatever, and to make a lighter, you can add a little water, and then uh, the calyx could be pure root. I hope. So 
I show you a little different approach. Maybe so we just use lighter, lighter, lighter red first. So let me do this part first. The create uh, the finish part. So if the the brush is is wet, you can just do it in one stroke. Let it bleed to make it rounded. It's kind of hard. You have to use a lot of paper to to do that. And I think so. I lose a little bit, uh, white, a little bit. That's very important. Uh, let me do some really loose ones to balance that. So I, I I don't have to you know to have all the petals loose, but some some at least I should have a white center which. Uh, you know, let me put in the stamen. So I concentrate more on the whole composition. Really, don't worry about individual petals. The grouping is more important. Okay, and uh, some flowers here. I don't even count the flowers. That I will define that it, if necessary later. So now I just try to cover all the areas I need to have flowers. So this is the shady area. Okay. Blood it before it gets bleed. Okay, and uh, just a loose one there. And <coughs> you can s you can put a you know signature on that, so this area is fine. But you can also put flowers there. I think it's a little bit um, too bare, bearing. So maybe a little bit flower would be good. But it which should it should. Uh, let me see. You can block that corner. Let me finish this lower part, part first. first. You know, some part, part like that would take uh, hours, hours to figure out. You can um, to s to to think. So I, I can do, do like a eighty percent fast, and then the last. 20% or maybe you know last 5% it may take long time to consider okay. that really makes it uh, a uh, social work or masterpiece or you know student work uh, it's the last part of it Try to match the style, it's kind of hard. It's okay to have some bleed, you know, but not all. If, it, if it's okay to have some, you know, loose, but not every flower is the same. So just vary, just vary them. It's nice. Okay, going to add the savings. I have like six minutes here, good enough. <coughs> and uh, you can use the a small brush. Like uh, I use this one. This uh, Red hair brush with a sharp point and a, a, a base, a, fa a fat base that load more 
think I'll call it. Uh, you can um, you can use hair dry. I mean, yeah, hair dryer would be the best, just to dry a little bit. But you don't want it um, completely dry, so it would be too stiff. Just uh, um, I'll do the dots maybe with a different brush. This brush is uh, too narrow. Maybe. So I'm using dark um, rouge, just a pure rouge, rouge color, and then I can dot the polling dots with uh, white and uh, yellow if I want. You can also use the same color to dot the the polling dots. I just show you a little variation from from the master. This could be a lot at the back view. One, two, three. One, two, oops. It's already got it. It dropped the dots there. And this is very important to, uh, to, fix, to fix the flower onto the branch. Uh, to define the, the uh, uh, perspective of the flowers and also create a depth to contrast the light with some dark. You, you, sometimes we just add some dark around the, 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 the dark petals to make it uh, looks more uh, ex exquisite. You see, it's, it adds depth to it. Yeah, just add some, and the dots could also go like that. You know, just like a line almost, you, know, you can, you don't have, uh, you don't have to copy the master, you have to develop your own sense of uh, rhythm, and that goes with the breath of your own. Okay, so that created, that complete that painting, if I have, okay, two minutes, let me, uh, let me see if I can do pounding sequences. I have a color here that's already a blend of uh, yellow and uh, white. Okay, here. It's called the Na Naples yellow. It's a new color. I think it's uh, easier just to use that. So it's a it's a mix of uh, yellow and white already. So it's opaque. I just load a little water so you can you you can uh, drop easily. See my my movement is with a rhythm. You know, okay. That's you don't do it one, 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 one. No, no, no. Like that. If you are doing it like me in a time limit, you will find your way and find your reason to do that. If you have like one hour to do this, everything will be dead. Trust me, you have to find in in Chibash's word the the easiest 
approach with the best result. Okay. And then thank you very much. Time is up now. Um, oh, I haven't inscribed. Give me one minute. I'll do that. So we'll just say, because um, this is a mimic <coughs> of a Chibashi student. So you don't have to uh, write uh, everybody's name, just to write your own name, OK? Uh, I, I'll just write on this corner. You know, if it's for a gift, you can write the couple's name, you know, uh, uh, wedding <coughs> congratulations or something. Uh, we have special, uh, like last time I did the one with the uh, uh, goldfish, right? You can copy that saying couple, some, uh, just, you know, good wish for the wedding or something. So I just write a year and uh, signature. Now it's seal. We could just put it on top. Okay, that's it. Um, that's all today. I think You can hold your picture, and we'll take a we'll take a shot of a group uh, picture as we usually do. All right. Let me enlarge and uh, gallery view. So please hold your picture uh, in front of your face if you have video. Um, if you don't want to take a picture, um, Peter, do you have a picture to hold in front of you? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be finished. Just uh, let me see your, your, uh, um, if you have tried. I'm going to take a screenshot here. Okay, here. One, two, three, smile. Again, one more time. One, two, three. Very good. I like the birds. Everybody's birds looks great. I think you have done all your drawings correctly, right? I can see that. Uh, birds is really difficult. If you draw it freehand, really, uh, by freehand, you really cannot do that. Uh, I think that's only one page. It's enough. All right, let me. OK. Thank you for uh, another wonderful class. Everybody did so impressively. I can see Maribel, I'll see you on Facebook. Uh, some, uh, some of you uh, posting their work on Facebook. And just tag me, you know, I'll uh, certainly give you a thumb up <laughs> okay. if I don't have time to critique. OK. Yes, Henry. Thank you. I want to share a comment in the, in the chat from uh, Kathleen, who lives in Korea. Oh. And Kathleen is sharing with us that the magpie is the national bird in Korea. Oh, yeah, yeah. National Thank birds, you. yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Nice to know. Um, so, yeah, it's a very popular culture uh, in, in Asian, Asian countries. Um, very good, very good. Yeah. Michelle, yeah, thank you for holding, keep holding the, the, the opinions. So we don't have uh, time to critique everybody. I um, look forward to seeing your work on your social network. I, I know uh, Barbara is there, <laughs> you, you, you would do that. Uh, so Bonnie, yeah, okay. I, I think everybody got an A, okay. <laughs> I'm very happy. Hope you, you are happy too. Yeah. You everyone is welcome to send me your work by email. I will share with the donors uh, who made the creative aging program possible. And I appreciate uh, your participation. We will see you next week at the same time using the same Zoom ID. You do not need to register if you are already receiving my email. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you very much. Thank you, Yonah, for, for taking care Good of yourself. Good morning, Good morning. 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 Good mor